So Stav, we're at conclusion of day two of the Guillardar Grand Prix in Douanene and um, I see you have French sailing legend Bruno Perron with you. Tell us a little bit about uh, what's been going on today and uh, what's happened on the water. Well we've had a fantastic day of sailing today. Two great races with really long beats and downwind legs and everybody's thoroughly enjoyed it um, and I will tell you about the results and the races but before that I managed to grab Bruno because I wanted him to just chat about how he thinks the dragons compare to his uh, round the world uh, sailing that's made him such a superstar. Of course he's had three Jules Verne's round the world records now is it? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And, uh, and so he's, he's a legend uh, not only in France but in the whole world and he's now racing dragons and uh, I was just going to ask you Bruno what's, uh, how do you think the dragon compares with what you've done in your past? Ah, it's difficult to compare, but when you love sailing, I mean, you can love any nice boat, monohull or multi -hull. There is no reason to say that one is faster than the other. This one is slow, but it's so technical in the ambience of uh, all you guys racing. I have been lucky enough to join you five years ago, uh, but fortunately, I race only five days a year. Yeah, uh, I so remember you kicked our ass. Where was it? Down it in was the, in Cannes, I think. In Cannes. Yeah, yeah. In Cannes. That's only my only one. Yeah, in Cannes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the first time in the Dragon, and he wins by a mile. <laughs> yeah. No, no, we were lucky. You won. But yeah, yeah, we won. But today is a bit different because um, we, we, we had bad luck and we, our crew broke his arm just over there on the, on, on the beat. So we had to, to, to stop. To, yeah. to stop yeah, today, yeah, yeah, yeah. To protect first the game. And uh, what do you think about one design racing? Do you think that is uh, you know, the ultimate challenge really for, for uh, dinghy and uh, yacht racing? Yes, I have always been convinced about two directions for the long-term future. One is complete freedom, that's what we did with the Jules Verne and the race, yeah. celebrating the millennium yeah. 10 years ago. And the other one is probably, yes, the one design. And in between, I don't feel very much comfortable with the rules when you spend a lot of money trying to gain this. So. Uh, except America's Cup, which is a very particular game. Yeah, so how do you think that's going now? Because you're involved in that, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So we've been working hard for the past uh, eight months with our team. It's called the Energy Team. It's my brother, Luke, and I, and uh, okay. a lot of uh, champions and multi-heroes and match racing around us. Okay. And uh, we are very, very close to be in the good position, except that the timing is very short. So and we are trying to convince uh, the organization look a little bit about the timing to lower us and other commercial team to be on time otherwise yeah. otherwise they're going to be probably finishing at four teams only so I mean oh, we have to uh, think well, about I can it. tell you we'd yeah. love to see a French team there we'd love um, to as well it's a yeah. lot of work yeah. Yeah. yeah okay well good luck for that thank you and I uh, hope your uh, crew recovers quickly from I hope I hope yeah. will you yeah. sail tomorrow with a substitute yeah, yeah exactly yeah okay. it's finished for the overall ranking but just for pleasure to yeah, be with sure. you yeah. sure great Okay, very thank you very much, Bruno. Thank you, we'll see okay. you tomorrow. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you, Bruno. So we're on now to the uh, Dragon results today. And as I said earlier, I'm here now with two of the guys that did very well today. Lars Hendrickson on my left again. Not only did he do very well yesterday in the protest room by getting redressed, which was deserved, uh, he now won both races today. So in fact, he's got the ultimate score of four firsts. And I'll let Lars explain that in a minute. I've also got Simon Fernie from Kinsale. And uh, they're here in the only Irish boat. It's great to have an Irish team here. We know the economy in Ireland has not helped things, nor in Denmark, which is why there's no Danish here at all. So it's great not only to see an Irish boat here, but to see it in the front at one stage. And that was in the first race. They had a lead on Lars, and I'll just let Simon explain how they managed to get that lead during that first race. I thought you were going to ask me how did we manage to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, were, we didn't have a great start. We kind of uh, had to tack off early, but we got a nice line going out to the right. Uh, we could see Lars and the other boats coming in from the, the left and the left middle. Um, but we, it was a bit of patience, really, because it didn't look good at one stage, but we just stayed on, stayed on. I think you were beside us at one stage on that beat yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, you I didn't have enough patience. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was all about patience coming up to the top. Um, <laughs> And then on the run, we uh, jived away quite early and went around the left gate. I think we managed to get into first place at that stage on the run. And then on the beat, again, we chose our side, went out to the right and tried to work the shifts up that side. Again, we kind of consolidated and we said if we keep a, a top two, top three here, we'd be doing quite well. Uh, went around in second, a couple of little tacks with you at the very top mark. 
Um, and then we said, right, we'll hold up, try and hold on to second all the way down, uh, rather than messing around with you um, and losing out to somebody else completely. Um, and it went quite well. Yeah, very sensible and very well sailed. And uh, of course, we've got the. Um what, what have we got in Kinsale next year? Uh, we've got the Gold Cup in Kinsale, um, 2012, so we're hoping for a big entry there. Yeah, great. And it's a great place to sail. If any of, the, uh, any of you out there are thinking about it, I would recommend it wholeheartedly. Now, <clears throat> like I said, I'll let Lars explain what happened yesterday in the protest room first. Well, we had this uh, situation in the first place where we were hit by... Um, we were in a mass collision. And a, a French boat had the fault, so um, Dolly, the GBR 633, and us, we were granted uh, average points. And average points means that uh, we're having average of the points we are getting in the races afterwards. So, um, yeah. Yeah, just to explain, happened. just to explain, uh, some of you may may not know the redress rule, and uh, the committee can actually do redress if it's during a race. They can see where you were lying in that race and maybe award you that position. But the other option is to give your average points. And as Lars now has the in, uh, immaculate score of three firsts, his average points is also one. So he's seeing on so the loop. Yeah. So far, yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we've heard from Simon uh, that you had a real tussle in the first race. Can you just let us know quickly how you managed to win the second race? Second race, yes, we had, um, we, we had all day we had been trying to stay on the, on the middle of the race course because we were honestly unsure about which side was the best one to be at. Yeah. So, um, we started in both races on the middle and we played the middle, but in the second start, I started in the middle, but we did not get a very good start, so we were a little bit uh, struggling and we had a Finnish boat which was squeezing us off, so we had to dock her and uh, I was forced to continue a lot more to the left than I wanted to, but um, it turned out not to be that bad because the boats on the right hand side uh, didn't, at the end, as you said, it was a patience game. Um, we were patiently waiting for, for some shifts to come from the left and uh, when the shift never came but at least the wind came back to what we call neutral. We have high, neutral or low winds when you're pointing and we were on, on, a, on a neutral wind we tacked and, uh, and then slowly, slowly, slowly within the next 10 minutes we were lifting on from the left winds coming in, beating the right side and also beating the left side. So uh, yeah. we had a clear lead when we came to the top mark and um, well, the rest of the course we just we just covered the fleet and covered the guys behind us. Yeah, it's a, it. yeah. Well, that's there's a bit more to it, but um, um, great sailing. And <clears throat> the thing is that um, with four races down now, there's three races to go, and of course there's still a discard. But what Lars has uh, is that he can't really afford to make a mistake because then his average points would also come down. So um, each race is very important for you, yes. even, that, more, even also, more so than anybody else. That's also why we start. We try to go play the, play the middle. Yeah, uh, be so conservative. Yeah. Be a little bit conservative, yes. Well, overall now we have uh, Klaus Diedrichs also doing sailing very well with Andy Beesworth and Simon Fry. They are, I think, a second overall at the moment uh, in uh, fever. And although they haven't been, I don't think, on the podium yet, one, two or three, they've put together four very, very consistent results. Top seven all the time. Yeah. Yes. Then we've got uh, your teammate uh, Evgeny. Braslovic, yes. Braslovic, he's uh, sailing Ukraine 9, he's lying third overall. So it's really hotting up into a great event and um, it's, it's still early days really with three races to go. But to be honest, uh, we saw Duarte at its best today. The wind was from the south so it was quite warm. Usually it's freezing like hell here <laughs> and everyone's complaining but the sun is out as you can see and uh, we're really hoping for three more uh, great uh, races. Yeah, you should mention the long, the long races today. Oh yes, we're very pleased, uh, very pleased that the, the, the race course and the race management have taken heed of what we, uh, we discussed in the first series and they've really lengthened the, uh, the, the, the length of the beats and the runs. And uh, the races are about two hours now and everyone 2.2 miles. 2.2 miles. Everyone's coming ashore knowing that they've had a great race and um, we really would like to thank them for listening to us and providing what they have done on the race course. Stav, as always, thank you and gentlemen, thank you for joining no, us right. this evening and uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you all again tomorrow. Okay.